Turner was born in London and he lived between 1775 and 1851. He was very famous during his life and today he is still one of the most popular and best known British artists in the world. He devoted his entire life to painting, especially landscapes. He studied the landscape endlessly, drawing and painting outside whenever he could. Turner was a professional artist by his early teens. It was all he ever wanted to do with his life. He became famous early in his career because his pictures of landscapes and seascapes were so beautiful. His work was admired because he was able to portray all the details of the scene very clearly and accurately, but also capture the atmosphere perfectly and make everything he painted look fresh and exciting. He was thought of as very modern for his time, in the late 18th to early 19th century, when Turner started painting, it was more usual to paint a landscape purely as a background to a narrative story. But Turner most enjoyed painting all the varied moods of nature. He watched how changes in light could completely alter the emotion, colour and feel of a landscape, and he depicted all these in his art. Many other artists were inspired by and imitated his work. In 2019, Norfolk Museums bought this painting, Walton Bridges, which was painted by Turner in 1806. We got it thanks to a generous grant from the National Lottery Heritage Fund and also support from the Art Fund and a private benefactor. We bought this painting because it helps us to tell the story of British art in our galleries. There was an important group of artists in Norwich in the early 19th century known as the Norwich School who were deeply inspired by Turner by his going out into nature to portray the landscape as it really was. Showing this painting among, um, among our others helps our visitors compare the, all these artists' work and to see the different ways that they portrayed nature. This is the first oil painting by Turner to be bought by a museum in Norfolk, Suffolk or Essex. And we are celebrating this by holding five exhibitions in Colchester, Ipswich, Lynn, Yarmouth and Norwich, so as many as possible of our audiences can see it. Turner loved travelling to study new landscapes. He travelled very widely around Great Britain and he visited East Anglia. He travelled around the East Coast, Orford, Southwold, Lowestoft, Great Yarmouth, drawing and painting as he went. We have no evidence that he visited King's Lynn or Norwich, but he had a patron in King's Lynn who bought some of his paintings, and he was certainly acquainted with some of the Norwich School artists, like John Crowe and John Sell Cotman, and many of the Norwich School artists exhibited with him at the Royal Academy in London. Some of the Norwich School artists probably saw Walton Bridges in 1806, just after it was painted. There is a lot happening in this painting. It is a peaceful scene, but there is still plenty of activity. One reason why we bought the picture was because we just wanted our visitors to enjoy it, to enjoy looking at all the details. This bridge is at Walton on the River Thames in Surrey, which in Turner's time was in the country, not a suburb of London as it is now. Turner was and is famous as a painter of rivers and the sea. When he painted this, he was living not far away and he would make himself a mobile studio on a boat to paint while on the river. Turner may well have painted this picture partly out of doors. If we look closely, we can tell when he painted it. The direction of the sunlight tells us it is late afternoon. These flowers, meadow sweet and water lily, tell us it is June or July. There is a mellow summery atmosphere here with the wide sunlit sky reflected in the water. This gives us a feeling of great space and depth, as if we can see a long way up into the sky and deep down into the river. Turner was outstandingly good at making nature look huge and limitless. He was a master of what is called perspective. 
This means putting every element within a picture, sky, trees, cows, in the right place and at the right size, so the painting as a whole looks three-dimensional, even though it is all painted on a flat surface. Getting perspective right is very difficult, but Turner was famous for it. Here we can see a long way into the distance towards the horizon. Like the wide sky and deep water, this also makes the work feel spacious and real, as if we could step into it. One of the many ways Turner has achieved this effect is by painting the trees on the horizon, not only smaller, but paler in colour. Our eyes see this element as further away. We also have a contrast. We have the beautiful, limitless natural world, but we also have a down-to-earth scene of cows drinking and grazing and bustling human activity. The figures are tiny, but there are a lot of them, 19, all ferrying their cargoes up and down the Thames. Turner was an expert on boats and always got his details right. We know that these are the type of barges especially made for this part of the river. To show people interacting with nature was typical of Turner's work. It was also typical of him to paint the real model world rather than an imagined place. So this river is shown just as it would have been in 1806. Attractive to look at, but busy. At this time, the Thames, like all major rivers, was very important as the best route to transport goods across country. Whether a sunny river like this one, a dramatic waterfall, fierce storm, or a night scene lit up by reflections of moonlight, Turner explored them all in detail. He inspired many other artists who aimed to capture a similar depth of feeling and atmosphere. There are several others, mainly from Norfolk, but I'll just point out one or two. John Sell Cotman was born in Norwich, and he spent his life in both Norfolk and London. He greatly admired Turner's work, and sometimes visited the same places and painted the same scenery. This watercolour portrays the famously beautiful Morburg estuary near Barmouth in Wales, with a mountain of Cadda Idris behind it. The colours are misty and soft, reflecting the changeable Welsh climate. It looks as if it's about to rain, or has just rained. The top of the mountain is hidden in cloud. Like Turner, who painted a very similar view of Barmouth when he visited just three years earlier, Cotman is capturing the mood of the scene rather than just focusing on the basic details. We also have a painting by William Joy, who was born in Yarmouth. He specialised in sea scenes and was familiar with Turner's work. Like Turner, Joy was admired for his dramatic pictures of storms at sea. Here we see the crew of a small rowing boat who are struggling to rescue a larger ship caught in the storm, probably off the Yarmouth coast. The white streaks of lightning in the sky match the white edges of the fierce waves. Joy shows the sea as frightening and dangerous. Man battling with the forces of nature was a popular theme in art at that time. Turner had painted many famous storm and shipwreck scenes which Joy would have known. By complete contrast, in this painting, Norfolk artist James Sillett shows the sea at peace. Moonlight sea scenes were also popular in art in the early 19th century. Painting a nighttime scene gave artists the chance to explore soft colours and the contrast between dark night skies and the bright silvery reflections of the moon on the water. Turner had painted several pictures of this kind. Here, in similar style, Sillett uses the moonlight of the shadowy ships to create a mysterious atmosphere. 